Hello and welcome to Unbounded Growth, a podcast that challenges you to grow and become a better version of yourself. My name is Mark Allen, and together with my friend Adam, we share thoughts and ideas from the books that we read and how they enhance our personal growth and development. We also host other readers and leaders. We learn from the experiences through our discussions. Our episodes air every Tuesday at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for listening in, and let's grow together on Bonded Growth. Hello, happy Tuesday, and welcome back to Unbounded Growth. My name is Mark Allen. I'm your host, and here with my friend and co-host for the first time in so many weeks. We are finally recording together the same studio again. How are you doing, Adam? <laughs> I'm doing well, Mark. How are you doing? I am doing a lot better. My leg feeling better, and uh, yeah, I'm doing great overall. Just just a busy weekend at home, and uh, yeah, I also went to church yesterday. You know, you don't know how much you miss it until yeah, you miss it. That's, uh, <laughs> that's really awesome. That's uh yeah, you actually don't know how much you miss it until you miss it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I spent also several weeks not going to church on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. I was only going to the porch every Tuesday, but it was um it was pretty different. And today I actually got a chance to to go to church and fellowship with brothers. So I spent the whole day. It's kind of normally I don't take um Sundays off. Mm-hmm. It's uh, for the last several months, actually, I've just been working all around um, Monday to Sunday in the lab every day. And today I just, I, I know I have this Sunday, I have so many stuff to get done, mm-hmm. but I just found it very important uh, to to be at church this Sunday. And I, I, I got a chance also this past week is also the birthday of uh, my second mom in the U.S. actually. She... You know, she nurtured me in her house. She really helped me when I, wow. I, got, I got to the U.S. Mm-hmm. And it was her birthday. So I was like, yeah, this time I'll make sure that I put everything aside. I'll go fellowship at their church and then uh, I can spend some time with her, try to hang out and talk and connect. It's been several months <laughs> since I was in that side, side of town. So, yeah, but overall, it was such a great week to be back in church and fellowship with the brothers. That's amazing. It's it's always it's always amazing to uh, to you know just be with people and fellowship and you know if you're not a, if not a church person that that's okay but you know find some time to to be in your community go go volunteer somewhere give back to people who are not able to give you anything in return you know just just put a smile on someone's face or pull 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 a joy in someone's heart it always it always means a lot especially during this season it's, it's a Thanksgiving season and that's one thing I like about the American culture the American history, the, the Thanksgiving season, of course, I like the turkey, but you know, <laughs> everything, everything else that comes with it, the love and the joy that we share this, during this season, and especially those who are not in a very good position to, to celebrate. Some kids here have their parents in prison. Some have never known their parents. Some are out there on the street struggling and going through the, you know, the struggles of the everyday life, and it always makes a huge difference when, 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 when you give back to your community, and if it all, uh, uh, the author of the the, the, the secrets or business secrets from the Bible actually says that it's not only about that, you know, even just doing your job right. You yeah, know, it's doing also your job giving. right, it's also it's giving. A, it, it's a huge part. Actually, well. it's it's the most he he the way he puts it, it's the most important part of giving. Mm-hmm. And to me, yeah, Thanksgiving is very special. I it's it's my favorite holiday. I didn't grow up celebrating Thanksgiving right. you know, in Congo, of course. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I came to America, I came to America around the Thanksgiving time. So I just landed and you the had food week on your just table. <laughs> started. I think I got here on a Monday, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And then on Thursday, I wake up in the morning and everybody's like, oh yeah, it's Thanksgiving today. And I'm like, what Thanksgiving? People have a turkey. And I'm like, okay, uh, what does all of that mean about turkey and, right. and Thanksgiving and mm-hmm. so on? But they explained to me what was Thanksgiving and it was a time in family, mm-hmm. time of fellowship, time of thanking God for just being alive, mm-hmm. for just making it through the year and and so on. So it's a, it's such a special time where I just like to spend it with my family, mm-hmm. spend it with, with friends. Of course, not I don't have as many uh, blood-related families in America, mm-hmm. uh, but except for my younger brother, Goel, so we... The last uh, several years since he's been here, we've been spending Thanksgiving together, or we may go together to visit a family and just 
say what we are thankful for. Hmm. And I, I love to cook, so I will cook a lot of food <laughs> for Thanksgiving. I have a lot of leftovers for the next several days, hmm. and it's just a very special moment for us. To That's amazing. That's family. amazing. So uh, if you are there, you know, uh, find some time to to spend your your Thanksgiving. As we said before, as we've been talking about atomic habits, which is clear. Uh, be intentional. Be intentional about your habits. Be intentional about what you're trying to do uh, this year with your family or by yourself. So, uh, back to the book. We, we've been talking about atomic habits for for the past, uh, I believe, three three to four weeks. So of course, we had we had that Tuesday off when when I had surgery, but uh, roughly three weeks. And, and last week. We, we, we talked a lot here. We, we talked about the first law. Of course, we, we discussed that there are four laws uh, to, to, to behavior change. The first one was to make it obvious. The second one is to make it attractive. The third one is to make it easy. And this, the, the fourth one is to make the law uh, satisfying. And of course, it also gives the, 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 the counterpart of it about how to break a bad habit. Uh, you want to make... Uh, you might not make the habit invisible. You want to make it unattractive. You want to make it difficult. And you want to make the habit unsatisfying. And so far, we're still talking about how we go about creating good habits. If you want to learn about how to break bad habits, uh, you can either buy the book or stick with us uh, to the end, to the end of the, not today's podcast, but to the end of all this season where we'll be talking more about, about in the next few weeks, about how you can go about breaking those bad habits. So you start your year fresh. You want to start 2023 with a new and fresh perspective and i always encourage people don't don't wait until december 21st to start planning you know 2023 no the time to start planning 2023 was on november 1st in my opinion you know you start planning it two months in advance three months in advance so that you know exactly what you're getting into so last time last week we talked about chapter four the man who didn't look right and then we we talked about how you need to keep a habit scorecard you know uh, a habit scorecard will look something like you know you wake up you turn off your alarm you browse social media you go to the bathroom you weigh yourself you brush your teeth you take a shower you put on the underwear and if you want to implement a new habit you need to implement it in something that you are already doing every day just re recapping a little bit of what we talked about last week and you can check our our last week's episode and i and i, and I realized that uh last week i said that we are episode two but it was episode four actually so today is episode five but you can check episode four where we talk more in details about that if you want for example to be doing push-ups in the morning you can you can insert it in between brushing your teeth and taking a shower you can say okay after i brush my teeth i'll do 10 push-ups then i'll take a shower then we talked about you know the best way to start a new habit in chapter five and then we talked about how motivation is kind of overrated today you know we all say you know if i just had enough motivation of course without motivation you cannot do anything at all but motivation alone will not help you solve all the difficulties and problems that you you've been having now Today, as we promised, that we, we're starting on a new chapter. It's chapter 7. It's also a short chapter talking about some very, some very crucial point. The secret to self-control. And, and I think I gave some props about it last week when, when I was talking about a little bit of my, my addiction to pornography and, and my struggle masturbation about how I, I, I came to overcome some of those temptations. For me, there are temptations. If you are okay with them, okay, that's, that's, that's your thing, right? But for me, there are things that I was trying to break. And then, you know, we even talked about this before. They are not necessarily bad habits and good habits. One thing that can be bad for you can be actually good for me if i'm trying to gain weight you know a cheesecake that may not be good for someone who's trying to lose weight will be good for someone who's trying to gain weight you know so it's not necessarily bad or good it's contextual what is your situation what is that that you're trying to achieve what are the behaviors that you're trying to break and what are the behaviors or the habits that you're trying to adapt so today we are going to talk about the secret to self-control you know the american society in general, all the world in general, we, we've kind of got to this point where we think that if someone is not able to achieve something, 
they don't have enough willpower or they don't have enough self-control, you know, over themselves and stuff like that. It's like, okay, if, 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 if you look overweight, people think, oh, it's because you just cannot control your eating. It's not always uh, the truth. Or it's not always, it's, it's not necessarily that. Sometimes you may have a lot of self-control over yourself. But if you are you have a lot of self-control over yourself, but you always put yourself in tempting situations, then your self-control won't help you uh, for, for anything. So I like I like the way James Clear introduces this story. And I'll tell this story and Adam we we're going to to tell some 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 other some other point that James Control uh <laughs> James Control uh, James <laughs> Clear <laughs> James Clear makes about makes about makes about the book. So he talks about it, the, the war in Vietnam, you know. The war in Vietnam, uh, first of all, the United States got into a war. Uh, <laughs> apparently, they didn't understand what was exactly going on. They didn't understand the, 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 the field. They didn't understand a lot of things. So they got into a war, and they stayed in the war way too long. The problem that started develop, developing is that they realized that a lot of these, of, of, of the soldiers out there in Vietnam, they, they were coming back to America with a narrowing addiction. Most of them were addicted to heroin. But when they started treating that, and back in the days, keep, keep this in mind, that back in the days, they thought addiction was something that you had for life. If you were addicted, back in the days, researchers was like, okay, this is uncurable. Yeah. You, you cannot be cured if you're addicted. But today's science and, and, and medicine and time has proven that, that, that that's not true. It doesn't matter what addiction you have, it can be beaten. Can you fall back, relapse into your addiction? Absolutely, Probably, you can. Yeah. But... And then there are more chances that you will if you don't change certain factors. But when they started studying these soldiers coming out of this war from Vietnam and they were relocating them to America, they said more than 30% were quitting their heroin addiction literally almost instantly, within 30 days. More than 30% of them, I think he was giving some other numbers, that were literally quitting addiction. But most of them were relapsing as soon as they went back to Vietnam. And then they went a little bit deeper to understand what was exactly going on. Is that every time they came to America, the things that were pushing them toward the addiction, the cues that were around them, you know, your, 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 all your friends around you are, are probably in, you, uh, abusing heroin. So you're like, everybody's doing it, so I might as well do it. But when you go back to your family, nobody's doing it. You know, and all of a sudden, all those cues, the stress of the war, hearing gunshot, you know, you no longer, you are no longer in that environment with all those cues that are pushing you. And, 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 and um, we really talk about this book, this book next year, uh, Hyper Focus, to see the importance of mastering your cues. I actually started reading that book uh, and I'm, I'm really learning a lot. And I've been practicing some of this stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, the part where... Uh, basically just letting your mind wander mm. so you see with atomic habits i put my phone away now when i'm in bed no phone and I just leave my phone away and, and as, I, as i mentioned you know that i i'm in a new place now new apartment mm -hmm. new environment mm -hmm. which actually now it's affecting my habits a lot of the stuff that i was doing before is kind of now coming back and so on mm. but I'm doing something that's actually jo uh, James Clear is mentioning here. Mm. He's saying that um, you could dissolve a bad habit or even an addiction mm. by a radical change in your environment. environment. Mm. So I'm I, I'm doing a lot of that of, of that lately. I've been you know putting my phone away again, um, really making rules about what to do where. Like if I'm watching a movie, I'm in the living room. Mm -hmm. If I'm when I'm in my bed, I'm going to sleep. And mm -hmm. and actually, lately, you know, I, I never had an issue with um, oversleeping of my alarm. Like, mm -hmm. unless I, I went to bed like at four in the morning. Right. But my body is just, right now, actually, I think with all, also the change in season, it really helped yes. me. <laughs> because I think, I, I think they should just skip this thing on. Because <laughs> I now, oh, I now, I sleep and then when I wake up, I still have time. Mm. I, I was like, oh man, I'm, I might be late. I probably overslept. I'm like, I slept too much. And I'm like, right. yeah, I have a lot of time, but it give me a lot of time. And um, and I'm, I'm making these radical changes to my environment again, mm. pushing my phone away, um, waking up and letting my mind wander, mm. like literally everywhere. 
I will think about this, then I think about that, then I think about that. And then, yeah, some creative thoughts come across too and mm. some solutions for my day and things I should actually be doing and all of that. And, you know, making this, making a very intentional changes to my habits, to my daily routines. Mm. Like, yeah, I started questioning actually the way I do a lot of stuff lately. Mm. Like the way I take a shower. Like, hey, do I have to actually be doing be taking a shower this way what are the benefits of me taking a shower <laughs> it's it's silly but i'm like right um yeah so it, it, it's important mm. like brushing all of those stuff i'm putting everything now kind of in question on my mind i'm like yeah i, I operate on autopilot on everything and, and, and that's the term you use because we don't realize it and of course we're still talking about habits and how to build build ha build good habits and break back ones is that most of us operate in autopilot it's like you wake up in the morning and that's what i like about atomic habit because writing down your habit creating this habit cards forces you to stop and think and and even you know this the crazy silly suggestion that i gave the other day try to brush your teeth with your opposite hand yeah <laughs> and you 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 realize how much you actually pausing and thinking, man, maybe I've been doing this wrong no, the whole time. The time exactly. You know, <laughs> and, 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 and I like what Adam is saying there. Like, you know, the secret to, to creative focus is, 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 is really to put away all the cues, all the distraction, to create a type of moment where you can focus. But at the same time, if you want to generate your creative mind, you need to let your mind wander. And, and, and you don't do that by carrying your phone around because your phone keeps on sending you all these cues. And all of a sudden, have you ever, I don't know if it happens to you, Adam, but it happens to me a lot because, you know, I'm a lot into electronics. I'm a little bit into basketball. I'm a little bit into, into, into personal growth and development. As soon as I open my YouTube, there's so many suggestions that the, if the reason why I opened YouTube in the first place is gone. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm starting to think, like, what did I open yeah, YouTube for again? That's me and social media. You like, know, it's like oh, you man. go on, you're like, okay, I'm going to look at this particular post or I'm going to text this particular person. But as soon as you open up your phone, you're just so bombarded with so many things, advertisement, yeah. so many images, and YouTube is telling you about all this stuff that you can do or you can possibly accomplish. And you are tempted to click on all those videos. Sometimes I just wonder, what if YouTube was just like, you know, Google, just a box where you can tap whatever you want and then bring you bring up all, all the videos. But they can't do that. That's that, their business. No, that's against business. <laughs> really, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's actually a w good way of thinking of stuff. Mm. And I think, that can actually be a, an interesting life lesson. Mm. When everything is going on autopilot, when everything is just a suggestion, when your mind is keep on popping up, mm. collecting data from different uh, from different um, side of it, and and directly, and connecting that mm. to something else, mm. and um, actually in programming and. Uh, a lot of that in business analytics, there is something that we call association. Sure, sure, sure. Rules, I think right? we, we talked, talked about, about it already. Last, last yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it, it, the way we operate, the way mm -hmm. our mind keeps on suggesting stuff. And then um, you decide, you decide on if you can now be in charge of your life. And I think we talked about that in, mm -hmm. in the previous episode. When you are in charge of your life, then you decide which part of that should be an autopilot mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. part of that should actually be um something that you want to keep on going and that's actually what this book is teaching mm. is that how to pick up your good habits or your good stuff mm -hmm. and translate them into a seamless process. decision process mm -hmm. it's something that you don't have to think about it mm -hmm. but it's good for you mm -hmm. it's really helping you grow it's you're picking up new habits mm. using the same method you use to gain the bad habit mm -hmm. you are using those methods mm. in getting new habits that can make a great change you know, I know life. Uh, man I, I was really impressed um you know just by and and, and i was talking to, to an attorney last week we just met in a social event event and she was telling me that there are some books that she's read five, six times. And in my head, I was like, why would you do that to yourself? And then I just realized that by reading Atomic Habit for the second or third time right now that, that I'm doing it, 
I, I am picking up a lot of lessons that I may have missed the first time just because yeah. I was just going through it. You know, and now that I'm not only reading, I've already read the book. I know what the book is all about. But now that I'm reading and trying to really apply these lessons, last week I'll tell you something crazy that happened on Friday. Uh, not, yeah, on Friday. Let's see, still last week, right? On Thursday, Friday. I had, I had a homework. It, it happened actually on Thursday night. I had a homework that was done Friday. In my head, when I was reading my calendar, you know, you know, I expect that professors would be reasonable and have homework online due on Saturday night. It's just the most reasonable thing to do. But apparently, our professor she wanted it, she wanted it to be on Friday, and and for all the good reasons because we have an exam uh, this coming week. She wanted us to have enough time to prepare for exam. So, I panic on Wednesday night. I realized, oh my God, my my, my project is due is due on 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 Friday. And she said, you need at least eight hours. It took me a little longer than that, but you need at least eight hours to complete it. And this is, this is the crazy thing that happened. Every time I'm studying and I'm trying to focus on something, my mind is just bombarded with too many things. And, and my temptation is always like, oh, I need to stop what I'm doing right now. Let me go take care of that, right? And, and I started implementing some of this habit by, by James Clear. I want to focus so how do I beat temptation of starting to look up the next ATEM Mini Pro, you know, that's coming up with, with black magic or starting? I'm too much into electronics, right? How, mm -hmm. And now that with my Achilles injury, I've, I've listened to too many orthopedics right now on YouTube. <laughs> and now every time like I open my YouTube, there's something about my Achilles, you know, and I'm like, how do I beat that temptation? So I did two things. The first thing I took my phone, I took it to the living room and I turned it off. So... All of a sudden, every time I got stuck on that accounting problem, my first temptation is, where's my phone? I need to scroll through my phone yeah. because that's a habit that has been uh -huh. built over time. And, and my phone has kind of become like my medication. It's the way I'm medicating yeah. my pain. Every time I feel, you know, there's that pain. Every time I'm bored, my phone. Every time something hurts, my phone. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm stuck on an issue, my phone. And now my phone was not in my room. Of course, you tell me, Mark, you can just walk to the other room and take it. Well, Adam has seen me today. It's a pain to walk lately, which, you know, this injury is kind of, you know, it's, it's a pain, but it's also a blessing. Because I'm thinking, man, I need to grab my crutches. I need to walk again all the way to the living yeah. room, turn on my phone for five minutes and just come, go to come back to the bedroom. It's not worth it, right? Now, every time I had a temptation, I, in, 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 my, in my notebook, my journal, I wrote this column and I said, temptation list. So every time something would cross my mind that would take my attention away from, from, from my work, I'll just write it down. Um, when I take my 15 minute break, I will look this up. When I take my 10 minute break, I'll look this up. It's not on my mind, not it's on a paper. I was able to focus for straight up four hours with 15 minute breaks. And the homework that was supposed to take me eight hours actually took me less time because I was fully immersed and focused in my work. And guess what? Every time I had those 15 minute breaks that I was giving to myself, everything I wrote on that distraction list became questionable. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what was, I, what was I trying to achieve when I wanted to look this and that? And so uh, this methodology of tracking your habit of knowing exactly what is stopping you from doing what you are supposed to do when you're supposed to do it we actually help you to overcome some some of these of, of this challenging habit okay going back to the story yeah. let, let me finish up the story mm -hmm. of the heroin soldier soldier uh, the, the, the american soldier that was struggling with heroin the study concluded that their environment was playing a big factor in the fact that they are consuming um, heroin you know as, as long as they were away from a, a never erring stimulating situation, you know, and, and James Clear gives, gives some suggestions that we're going to talk about in a few minutes here. They, they, it's like all of a sudden that temptation was gone. But the people that were sent back to Vietnam, they said they relapsed within the first 30 days that we went back into the environment. Why? Because they had the same pressure, pressuring environment, the gunfire, and all that. And all that environment recreated the perfect condition for them to be addicted again. That's why it's important to control what you have around your environment. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to give, uh, to give a lot of credit to a lot of um, our communities and a lot of our upbringing, not just within the Congolese community or within the African community, but the world community everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
we all know what is a good habit mm. and what is a bad habit. That is a human nature. Mm. We know. It can be something that is even widely accepted or controversial or so on. But deep down, we know and our environment pushes us. Mm. And there is actually a part of that story that James Clear actually is putting out here. Mm. And he's saying that this is not only applied to people who have an addiction over um, heroin or drugs mm. or so on. Mm -hmm. This is something that could potentially have a tremendous, a tremendous impact mm. in other aspects of things. The way your environment thinks about it. Like something that helped these soldiers is that whenever they were coming back home, mm. everybody here doesn't want their kid to be taking drugs and, right. and heroin. Mm -hmm. And it becomes something that the society is not open to having because it's not something that is great. And I'm going to go ahead and and, and, and pick on one of the points here that I've, uh, the trends that I've seen lately. Mm. And um, of course, I am not against anybody. I want to just make make this claim. I'm not against anybody personally. Mm -hmm. But as a scientist, I know that obesity is bad. Mm. Being obese, it puts you in a really high risk of getting cardiac disease. That's right. You will live a, ba a bad life, a not healthy life, and not a happy life. You'll be spending a lot of your money mm -hmm. in hospitals, in and out of hospitals. Mm. But we live in a time also where a lot of media lately, a lot of these big companies, and I saw Nike. Nike now has two type of model. They have one that's, you know, thinner, healthier, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And now they have a new definition of healthy, mm. of trying to recreate models that are now, um, you know, bigger in size and, and, and so on. Mm. And with that, actually, it can be such a huge issue because now you are redefining mm. how communities should be seeing um, swing, swing obesity. Right. And James Clear actually put, put out a, put out a, sent a, a sent sentence here. He say, if you are overweight, mm -hmm. a smoker, or an addicted, you've, you, or an addict, You've been told your entire life mm. that it is because you lack self-control. Mm -hmm. Maybe even that you are a bad person because in our community, mm. really like if you have an addiction, we, 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 we have a community that is engaged to fight against some of these things that are not as great. Mm -hmm. But it's how they fight it that is actually an issue. But since they're already fighting it, it's already a plus. Right. And then he's saying the idea that a little bit of discipline would solve all of our problem is deeply embedded in our culture. That's right. That mm -hmm. We need discipline. We all know that, hey, change your eating habits, do this and do that. Mm -hmm. That's discipline. Everybody knows that. We don't need a new book on habits mm -hmm. to know that. It's something that is... Um, that is that is well known. And then he continues to say, say when scientists analyze people who appear to have tremendous self-control, it turns out those individuals aren't all that different from those who are struggling. Instead, disciplined people are better at structuring their lives in a way that does not require heroic willpower and self-control. So the advice here around this chapter, and, uh, and Mark can really expand, and expand on that, that, is that it's not about you having self-control. Mm -hmm. Community, we already know that that thing is wrong. Mm -hmm. And you might think of yourself, self-control becomes an excuse. You know, like, I can't control myself. I can do this. Because, no, you don't have to be superpower. You don't have to, to be a superhero to make a difference. Mm -hmm. It's just go at the atomic level mm -hmm. very very tiny point and very tiny cues that you can follow some of the advice that is given here in this book you can just pick them up and follow them mm -hmm. and um, make those changes and he, he, he he's we, we're going to talk about it in a little bit on how how to overcome temptations mm -hmm. and stuff like it. it's not about the self-control you just have to be in a situation where we, you don't even need Self-control self to begin with. Like one of the examples that he gave here, mm. um, he talked about um, 
uh, social, um, no social media, but video games. Mm -hmm. He said that you could actually change your video game addiction mm. in doing a simple, simple thing. He say if you have, usually, okay, your video game is in your living room. Mm -hmm. It's always there. And every always time you there. come, you will see it there. You don't have so, to think. You, like, know, you just come, it's come, there, and it's yeah, ready. But no, just make, it, make one thing. Mm. Unplug the cable. Mm -hmm. Put the cable one location and the console the other location. And you will see how things... It's, you don't have to be a superhero. That's you right. don't have to even control yourself. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah, when it's... You don't even... The temptation, okay, it might be there, mm -hmm. but you don't have the means to get it done. And that can make a huge difference. And, and the temptation, you see, <laughs> here's the thing. The temptation is... Uh, and Adam, thank you for, for that point, because I believe that the temptation decreases as you stay away from it. The more you stay away from a temptation, the lesser the tempting thing we get to you. And that's exactly the example uh, Adam is giving. So when, 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 when I got my surgery, there's, there's something that happened. I was really, I was really dull, to be honest. I was really very discouraged. It's just been, you know, it's just been a, I'll say a, a teaching year. I've, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot and, and, and a lot of challenges have come my way. Then it really started getting, getting on me. And I came from the hospital and I was having these massive headaches and stuff like that. And I couldn't, you know, the anesthesia was wearing off and it's my first time ever to have surgery. A lot of things that I didn't expect and I never experienced before. So I thought I was really going crazy. My head was about to explode. So I sit down there and, and, and I sleep on, on, in, in the living room or the couch and I finally take something, some ice on my head that finally calms down the headaches. And, and Plamidia and I were watching this cooking show. And after that, I'm like, ah, man, you know, I'm not doing anything. It's, it's too painful to stand up. My leg is still hurting. You know, what about I put on a movie? And that was a mistake. <laughs> because it, it, it started, it opened up right away this trend in, 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 my, in, in my mind. Right? It's a whole channel now. It's a whole channel. Now, every time I sit in the couch on the living room, the first thought that comes to my mind, I need to turn on the TV and watch something. And keep this in mind, Plamidia and I have been married for almost a year and a half. We, we've been living in this apartment for, for just as long as we've been married. Our TV was something that we dusted off every Saturday because nobody ever watched it. Plamidia was, you know, she watched stuff on her phone. I almost never watched TV, so I was either, either reading a book in, 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 in the office or just, you know, be on my computer doing something, you know, you know, watching a course, a class on Udemy or YouTube or learning something. And, and so our living room was pretty much the place where we just sit down and have a conversation. Now, our living room goes from there because I'm too much into crime movies, action movies, CIA, NSA, FBI type of movies. That, that's, that's what I like to watch. Blamidi, she's into cooking shows. You know? <laughs> and, and so our interests don't align very well. So most of the times when we sit in the living room, the TV will be off and we're just sitting, we'll just be sitting and having a conversation. But now, because of that trend, every time I was in the living room, I wanted to see the latest show on Netflix. And which, to my great surprise, Netflix doesn't have a lot of new shows. You know, it doesn't <laughs> have a lot of new, new stuff. Anyways, but I sit down there and it becomes a habit. And last weekend, on Friday, you know, I was struggling to sleep. I was like, you know, if I go to the living room, turn on the TV, pull on the movie, I'll probably just sit down there and then sleep. But the movie was too interesting, so I couldn't sleep. So I <laughs> kept on watching the movie. And then I thought to myself, but well, how can I overcome this? Then this crazy idea came to my mind. Before, before I even reviewed the book, I was like, well, what if we unplug the cable of the TV mm -hmm. and then I go drop it off over mom's house? You know, then I can't watch the TV because there's no cable. <laughs> <laughs> and if I want to watch the TV, I have to drive for like 15 minutes to mm -hmm. get the cable, come back home, reply. I was like, yeah, if I do that, then I don't think why. And I think I've, I've got my TV stuff under control, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's not like it will stop me from doing, from doing major things. But think about that. If TV is your addiction, what if, what if you unplug your TV, take the cable, give it to someone? Guess what? Every time you come home, you sit down and you turn, you try to turn on the TV and then you remember, oh, I don't have a cable. Then your mind starts thinking about what can I do next? Yeah. 
And that's when you start, you know, implementing the habits that you've been trying to implement. If if you have to go to the gym, if TV is such a big issue for you, stopping you from going to the gym, for example. Yeah, I mean, when you, you realize that you don't have a cable to turn on your TV, yeah, then you put on your running shoes and yeah. you, go, you, go, you go to the gym. And at yeah. the end of the day, you don't really need um, self-control. You really don't. Uh, this I learned this from this book, and I think it's a very interesting lesson, actually, that a lot of people should be looking into. One thing that is true is mm -hmm. that temptation, you can resist it today. Mm -hmm. You can resist it tomorrow, once or twice. Yeah, yeah, it's going to get by. But you won't keep resisting temptation. The temptations actually, you know... The Bible actually is recommending people to run. To run away from God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, so this is actually another way mm. for you to actually apply what the Bible is saying. To my, run away. My theory about temptation has always been this. Don't try to beat the temptation. Stop putting yourself in tempting situations. Exactly. And that's what James Clear is saying in, other, mm. in another word here. Mm. He's saying that a radical change in your environment will stop you to try to be a superhero. Mm -hmm. Don't be a hero. Don't be the guy who like, okay, um, you know, everybody goes out and you're like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm staying home because I'm a Christian, or blah, blah, blah. That can only go for so long. Yeah. That can only go for so long. You actually have to find something that works. Like, I want to share one, one thing that I did in college. Like in that last, uh, this, this past Saturday night, mm -hmm. I was, um, uh, I, I just had a tough day in, in the lab and I was not very productive. I have a huge presentation coming up and, and so on this, this week. And um, so I, I went home, I was, my moral and my, just my energy was low. So I just started going back through memories of when I was in college and people who actually uh, maybe have my WhatsApp number and so on. They, they probably saw, on, I posted on my WhatsApp story, some of the old stories from, from college. And I started seeing that all those memories that we went through and when I was with friends in college and so on, and when my brother came and it was just the type of the, the laughter, the happiness. I was very happy in college. Like mm. it, in Lob Lobok was like home. I was really feeling really great over there. And there is one thing. I was, I'm a Christian, grew up Christian. I was raised with Christian values. Um, I do not go to clubs. I don't say like going to clubs is wrong. For some people it works for them, but for me, it just doesn't work mm -hmm. and so on. And um, in Lobok, we had we had two groups, people who really love nightlife and they, you know, they like to go to clubs and, and so on. And the rest of us who cannot sustain that environment. So what did we do? Instead of being like, oh yeah, um, so they went to the club uh, then we just stayed at home. We are doing nothing or we go, everybody goes to sleep. Then you feel like your life is boring. Like somebody <laughs> else has a better interesting life. <laughs> right. They're going out <laughs> and so on. So we, we, we made a different, we made a change. Mm -hmm. And the change that we made in that is that, okay, on Friday, we're having stuff too. Mm -hmm. Worship night. My brother pick up a guitar. Let's make some noise for the Lord. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. If we don't do that, I was... um. I used to organize my own parties in college, type of parties where there's no alcohol. Everybody just talks to each other. <laughs> right. Literally, everybody stays, you know, sober mm -hmm. and everybody has a conversation. I will cook my own food. Mm -hmm. I'll spend my money. You don't have to bring anything if you don't want to. I will cook. I will create my own environment in such a way that my house was very hard to bring alcohol in anyway because I don't consume it. And a lot of a lot of people just, it's an identity that they gave me already on call in college that... Mm -hmm. Uh, this guy won't be drinking alcohol. So it's, we create this environment. People will come and have a lot of fun and we can, you know, talk to each other, know each other. A mm -hmm. lot of friendships got created there. Mm -hmm. A lot of connections got created. And I was like, this is my goal mm -hmm. in college for people to meet each other. So it's, uh, you don't have to be a superhero. You don't have to be the Christian hero kid in college who is like, yeah, I, like, I'm overcoming all these temptations. I'm overcoming and No, you just have to have a radical change. And that's the main story of this chapter mm. is that creating that radical change in your environment could create the whole difference. You don't have to be a superhero. You don't have to overcome temptation. Mm. You don't have to have self-control. Mm. Like, hey, I'm, I'm holding myself so tight. You don't. All you have to do, just make the 
best or the good behavior, the good habit, mm -hmm. make the cues of the good habit obvious, and make the cues of the bad habits invisible. invisible. Yeah. It's as simple. That's the conclusion he's putting on this chapter. Mm -hmm. It's like, just that. Mm. If you can put that on, it will change your life. And, and it has changed mine. Exactly. And now you just have to figure out for, for the exactly bad habit that you're trying to break, what is it that you have you have to stop doing? And, and you know, it, 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 it can be challenging. Uh, this, is, this is one thing I've discovered about about the YouTube algorithm, all, all the algorithm out there. They tend to suggest to you things that you are usually watching, right? So if you're usually researching food, most of the ads that you're going to get are going to be about food. If you're usually, like, I'm, I'm a lot into electronics and I'm a lot into books and seminars. Guess what I, I see in most of my ads? Exactly that, you know. You, you, I see a lot of book, books advertisement. I see a lot of ads you know, on, on, on uh, Achilles and seeing this and that doctor. And I see a lot of ads on electronics. I mean, tell me about the, the latest electronic. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll name it for you. Because even when I'm not tempted to really dig, dig into it, I'll see those ads. So control what you usually search for. Every keyword that you type in. Try to rethink your strategy about that. If you're like, oh man, I'm not looking for this temptation. They come to me. Yes, I'm not looking for this stuff that I'm trying to abandon. They come to me. And that's very normal. That's just the way uh, this stuff works. And if and if all this is, is not helping, go back to a flip phone. Go back to, to, you know, you're not missing on anything. If you have a flip phone for, for your everyday things and then you have, you know, a smartphone if you need to use the GPS and stuff like that, you know, that can, you know, the radical change... <laughs> What chance clear means by radical change? And of course, you, you find a lot of lessons in the Bible and all most religions as well. It's just the that being tough on yourself. Zig Ziglar used to say, life is tough. But if you are tougher on yourself, life eventually becomes easier. So James Clear gives a few suggestions here. And we're going to finish up with that, this first law. He said that, for example, he gives a few suggestions to avoid some temptation. He said, if you cannot seem to get any work done, Leave your phone in another room for a few hours. That's what I did last week, and it worked miracles for me. And I, and I think I'll implement more of it again this week. And 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 you know, if you have a lot of responsibilities, I, I'm a father, and and I have a, a, a large family here in America as well. And sometimes they need to talk to me. Just tell people in advance. Tell them, hey, I will be unavailable from this time to this time. You know, the worst thing <laughs> I heard this story about. This guy usually used to have when he's in his bedroom and he's studying. Like, even if you call him and stuff like that, he won't come out. He won't even answer your phone. It doesn't matter how hard you knock on his door. And one time his friends really wanted to talk to him and they knew that this guy would not come out. So they called the police to say they think the guy is dead because they haven't seen him outside of the house in a few days. So the police is coming to the door, knocking the door and opening it up. And they're laughing, not knowing exactly what they did. So just tell your family in advance. Tell your loved one in advance. Hey, I'm taking... Like, I read this story a few years ago about this lady that how she became a writer she said i struggle a lot to write i struggle a lot to focus and one day she said okay from this time on every time people ask her what are you doing on saturday she said well i got a part-time job on saturday i'm working from 9 a.m to 1 p.m i was like what job is it she said well i'm a writer and every saturday from 9 a.m to 1 p.m she will literally go into a library with only her laptop turn on turn off her phone and for those four hours, she'll write. And it became a habit. Saturday became a writing day. She'll write for four hours every single Saturday. And today, she's a published author that has published more than 10 books out there. So look for the strategy that works for you that can help you focus. So if you're wasting too much time watching television, move your TV out of your bedroom. If you have a TV in your bedroom, unless your bedroom is the only piece you have in your house, uh, you know, find a way to, to keep that TV away or find a way to turn it off. Is it a necessity in your life? If it's not a necessity, you can you can do without TV. People back in the days did without TV. We, we can survive, you know? It's, 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 not, it's not one of the basic human needs. Yeah. You know, and if you're spending too much money on electronics, oh, he's all preaching to me right when he said this right here. Stop reading the latest review on Tech Gear. I do that all the time, and, and guess what? I, I ended up spending a lot of money on electronics. You know, or if you are playing too many video games, unplug the console and put it in a closet after each use. Even people like me who struggle with, with your computer, sometimes you have 128 tabs open, 
and you cannot even remember why you opened all those studies in the first place and you're so stressed out about closing them because you may be losing important work. I'll tell you one strategy. At the end of the day, turn off your computer. Turn it off, tomorrow start fresh. And every time you have more than 10 tabs open, start clicking and closing the tabs that you are no longer using. It will help you uh, to solve some of those issues. So a reminder, we got follows. The first one we just finished it is to make it obvious. Make, make it obvious. If you want to create a habit, make it obvious. But if you want to avoid, make it invisible. If you, you don't want the, the, the habit, make it invisible. The second one that we're going to start on today is to make it attractive. The third one is to make it easy. And the fourth one is to make it satisfying. Now, making it more attractive. Uh, we got about, uh, I'll say, 15 minutes left. So we are probably just going to be reviewing chapter eight, and which is a lot because we, we are looking into now how does your brain work? In terms of some, uh, you know, some, some, some chemicals, some, some drugs that are very, <laughs> that is very legal. Yeah. Dopamine, you know, <laughs> it's a drug, but it's very legal to consume. <laughs> your, your brain actually produces dopamine. And dopamine, you know, the whole motivation thing that people talk about, it's all about dopamine. When, when you are motivated, it simply means that your brain has produced enough dopamine to push you to do a certain action. Now, as we said before, you can't you can't do anything without motivation. If like the motivation or your dopamine is completely at zero, like you, as a matter of fact, the experiment that James Clear talks about here, the yeah. conductor, they block in the lab, they block the dopamine from the rats. And the rat died within a few days mm -hmm. because they didn't want to do anything. They didn't want to wake up. They didn't want to have sex. They didn't want to drink water. They didn't want to eat. They didn't want to do anything. And that's just the impact of dopamine. Dopamine creates that. But we're going to step back and start this chapter <laughs> uh, from the beginning. Now, how do you make an habit attractive? Chapter 8 says how to make a habit irresistible. And I kind of just like the way James Clear introduces this. You know, it starts by showing how bad habits become irresistible to you and now what we want to do here is to make your good habits irresistible to you it's like man i can't wait to go to the gym can, can you believe that how, how great would that be you just wake up like dad i can't wait to go to the gym oh no i can't <laughs> wait to eat veggies tonight i'm not yeah. i'm not totally excited <laughs> about eating veggies every day but yeah, i want to get uh, to that point where it's like oh my god these veggies are just so I, good <laughs> i just especially think that the guys who write all these books that we are reviewing they're very interesting people imagine like the amount of i really just appreciate them the amount of research the amount of things that seem to be so common sense mm -hmm. but they are not as common sense as we would think because these are something that we actually all experience every day and it's it's so clear probably that that's why these books are like international bestsellers mm -hmm. now think about it a few things like there is um there, there's a lot of things that you actually like like I can't wait for the next season of that TV show to come out like manifest man. manifest, manifest it way, it's been getting oh, on my nerves I, I was like I, why did you just release 10 episodes exactly that's, that's not even fair I, those 10 episodes I watched them in one day same <laughs> <laughs> I watched them in one day now think about it right yeah to this one weekend I just completely took the whole day. last weekend actually yeah last weekend same here. I took yeah. the whole day off on a Sunday, I believe, the whole Sunday, oh. I was one episode after the other. And then at the end, the story is still, it's still, still there. Living, it's still living you. Still you know. like, man, are you st you're still craving for more. No, so think like, about craving about good habits yeah, like that. Imagine, imagine. So it's kind of, um, uh, and that's that's actually the some of the stories that he's telling here about mm -hmm. um, these bad habits mm -hmm. that are just very irresistible that you you can't wait to go back to and now channeling that and 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 if we can just kind of fast forward here to the actual experiments that mm. that they performed um they did three experiments in this mm. the first experiments they had mice were depleted of dopamine that means the their dopamine channels were completely blocked mm -hmm. and when that happened um i work with mice Mice are, are really social um, creatures. They really like to be around each other. Mm -hmm. 
they have a lot of sex. If mice are not having sex, it's an issue. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's something actually, it's actually really funny when you see it in that, that's in the lab. Like, yeah, if they're not really, you put male and female mice there and they're not really um, having sex, it's a whole problem. Right. And, uh, and you will know that something is wrong. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that a lot of people who do behavior studies and that's, mm. that, that, that's really what happened. Now, when they depleted them of dopamine, they really did not have any courage, no motivation, nothing. Mm. But now look, in this second part of the experiment, a follow-up experiment happens. It's like, hey, we're going to keep this dopamine level blocked. Mm. But instead of opening them to dopamine, now we're just going to give a reward. Mm. In this little, cha- this little hole here, mm. We're going to be putting some sugar mm-hmm. over there. And you will see the mice who go, okay, they test this really cool stuff. And then, okay, yeah, forget about the dopamine, bro. This here <laughs> is the thing. Like, oh, oh, man, this tastes really good. Right. This reward that we are receiving here. Okay, as soon as, if I can just poke, poke my nose over here, I'm going to get sugar. The mice, when they're like in big numbers, they started going and... And actually, it started poking their nose like a hundred, a hundred times, like poking their nose every wow. minute. They're like, "Yeah, we want more of this. We, mm. we want more of this." And now, if as a scientist, you take now those experiments, mm. now you try to perform a reverse. Mm-hmm. You try to perform it. You you try to to reverse um this ex- experiment where now you are giving them tons of dopamine. You give them a, a, a lot of um, dopamine and then at the same time, you try to see if that's also going to get them to bring their nose, yeah, the, 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 their nose um, to the same box. And you could see now those mice, they started now developing a craving mm. for that substance <laughs> that they were receiving before. Mm. It's like, yeah. Now forget the dopamine, forget the motivation, Mm -hmm. forget all of these things that you think they're bringing you joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. Forget it. What is rewarding is what is important. Mm. And this can be at a very, um, at a a lot of level. And um, this, I'm just going to put this as an idea out there for conflict resolution. And, you know, Eastern Congo has been in wars and, and, so much. I always make this statement that there's no such a thing as a national interest, mm. like the interest of the entire country. Mm-hmm. No. Regardless of who you are, politicians, they don't work for the people. Mm-hmm. They first work for themselves. Yeah. And any, at any level, even just as a human being, of course you want to work for, you want to create the impact or whatever, but you're not doing it, the impact because of what that impact is doing. A lot of things, it's because of how that is making you feel mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. That's what drives a lot of things. Mm-hmm. For, for some people, it's money. The, is that sugar that is talking about in this experiment. So it's kind of like the anticipation. What you anticipate yes. start driving that dopamine That's dopamine high. high. Yeah. yeah, that dopamine high. So what, what your reward is what fill your dopamine channels, you see. If your reward is bigger, if it's something that you think, okay, bro, I'm going to be a millionaire mm. by the end of this work, mm-hmm. then yeah, that feels your motivation. That feels everything that you're doing or you are, you are trying to do. Mm. The same thing goes in. And at the same time, if that is also benefiting mm-hmm. a lot of people, then we have the next Microsoft. And that's what Business Secrets mm-hmm. from the Bible is saying. Mm-hmm. He's, he make a statement there. He say like... Uh, um, Bill Gates does more to the world than Mother Teresa ever did. And I was like, oh man, like how? Mm-hmm. He said, well, he came up with something that will help everybody. But at the same time, he came up with it for a lot of personal gains. Mm. He needed it. It was something that would help him. He would make his life better. Mm-hmm. He created it and now he's helping the whole world. Mm. So if you think that peace is something that is satisfying to you, Mm-hmm. It's something that is helping your heart. It's really helping you fulfill who you want to be, mm-hmm. reaching your own personal goals. Mm-hmm. 
then at that time, you can also see how to find that peace and to turn the whole country mm. in a peaceful place mm -hmm. when you are getting those personal satisfaction mm -hmm. to every action that you are doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you know, I, I like I like the the fact that you you laid down and thank you for say, for sharing the experiment, especially about the my son. You know, the dopamine, the dopamine. How you know enough? A lot of it we push you to want to repeat a certain behavior multiple times, and not enough on it. Not enough of it we push you to hate a certain experiment. You know, and and now just clear goes on about talking about this this temptation bundling. Now, how can you use, uh, uh, and the idea I like about this is the, how James Clear is, is going about reverse engineering <laughs> this process, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, okay, now you've seen the food advertisement on TV, Look, I mean, photography, this is what happens when you take a picture of food, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, you make it shiner. Yeah by you know you add some extra oil on it so it looks shiner on the on, on, on the camera you put a lot of light so the food looks better mm -hmm. and then sometimes these advertisers they'll go as far as gluing food together so it doesn't fall mm -hmm. so when you are looking at this at this oatmeal and this burger it looks so great it's because of all the stuff that they've put behind it all the stuff that they've put behind it just to push you to want to consume it. Now, talking now about bundling temptation is building the habit that you want to do after or before the temptation. It talks about this guy in Germany that had this great idea. He used to love Netflix, but because he was an engineer, he figured out a way to hook up his television to his bicycle so that his TV will only come on after his pedal for a certain yeah. period of time. Now, guess what? The guy was watching Netflix as much as he wanted, but at the same time, he was forcing him to exercise, you know? And that's why you're, 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 the habits that you're trying to abandon, I won't call them bad habits, I'll just say the habits that you're trying to abandon may not necessarily be terribly bad. You can start learning to use them at your advantage. For example, you know, I told you before that I used to love sodas. Like, I, I wouldn't spend a day without drinking soda. And I just figured out, well, if I drink soda, if every time I drink soda, I have to be on the treadmill for an hour. You know, it's a fair trade. So before I drink soda, I'll be on the treadmill for an hour, and then I'll, I'll, I'll reward myself with, <laughs> with a nice cup of soda, you know. Eventually, if you you create that mechanism where you can at least be accountable to someone, like, hey, I just took a can of soda and I've been on the treadmill for five hours for an hour, it just helps you to build good healthy habits. And eventually, it's a matter of time. Eventually, the soda will no longer be part of the picture, especially if you're trying. You can start replacing it. Okay, after drink soda, I'll drink two gallons of water or maybe a gallon of water before I can, after, after I, I, I walk on my treadmill, I'll drink a gallon of water before I can drink my can of soda. By the time you've drank your two gallons of water, your stomach is too full. You don't have any more space for soda. Yeah. And you start cutting down on your soda slowly by slowly. Listen, radical change of habits, they work for some people. Some people just wake up one morning and like, from today on, I won't do this anymore. Yeah. And it works. But for the majority of people, it doesn't work that way. No. You got to take it through a small consistent process we we can be talking and this is why you know sometimes that john adam when like he is not too much into motivational speaking and stuff like that <laughs> you know the, the one thing that motivational speaking does to you it makes you believe that everything is attainable and possible and yeah. you can do it from today and you can do it right now the only problem that's true and and that's very important because without motivation you can't do anything right mm -hmm. the only problem with that is that unless you have steps you have a strategy unless you have a system unless you have a system <laughs> to attack that guess what you will start doing something you will fail at it and you feel bad about you and the reality about change is you don't change by feeling bad about yourself you actually change by feeling good about yourself yes 
Definitely. And, and if you keep on feeling bad about yourself, you're beating yourself down. Yeah. And guess what? You go back to medicate yourself with the very same thing you're trying to abandon. I'll give you an example, you know, and, and again, uh, this is subjective, right? Pornography was not good for me. It was not good for my health. It was not good for my brain. It was not good for my spiritual health. So I'm trying to abandon it, but I don't have a strategy. So I go back, I say from today on, you know, you make all this confession. I'll never do it again. And the very next day you do it. Guess what? Mm-hmm. Now you like you start feeling bad about yourself. You're like, okay, you know, now I can just. I mean, I already done it. I can just go ahead and just watch another one and think good about it. And you keep on perpetuating the thing that you're trying to abandon simply because you don't have a system. So it's not enough for you to just listen to us and be like, hey, man, Mark just put his phone in the living room and it worked for him. No, mm-hmm. you gotta take it slowly. If if I was not, I was not spending that much time on my phone. And it's been a long process. Like, you know, some applications are not available on my phone during the day. When I click on them, they say, okay, this application is not available, but we can let you use it for five minutes. You know, this, I've been building this over a year. Now, for me to leave my phone in another room for over an hour, over two hours, it's become easier, quote unquote, because I've built up to that. But if you just come and say, okay, I'm going to do it. I remember one friend of mine, her phone cracked. Her screen cracked. And it told her it's going to be four hours before she get a new phone. And she literally told me, I'm experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Wow. She's like, I've been yeah. so addicted to my phone. And right now, like, I don't Actually, know what yeah. to do in my life. I've been, I've been through that. When yeah. I, when I, when I, um, this past summer, I stopped using WhatsApp and all the social media. And I really go disconnected with a lot of stuff so I can focus on my work. Really, I was feeling like a person who was withdrawing from me, like, like an addict. It was, it was a, such a hard thing to do. It's crazy. Now, yeah. what happened to me? I went to a retreat in 2021, a, a great retreat. Uh, I'll definitely advise all the men to go there. Man, I go into this retreat and they had one condition. You can't have your phone. No electronics for four days. Mm-hmm. The first two days, I had terrible headaches. Oh. And I couldn't understand what was causing them. And you know, when I started doing uh, this analysis, I just realized, oh, every time I was like, I would use my phone, I'll use my phone. Now that I didn't have my phone to use, I had to find different things to do. And the process of trying to find different things to do started causing these massive headaches. And after the third day, it's like my phone never existed. Mm-hmm. Like I was not, like when they gave me back my phone and I started using it, I was like, I didn't even know what to do with it. So don't 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 just go about taking this process abruptly i mean if it's gonna work for you it's gonna work for you but the other thing is if you fail it's okay it's okay for things not to work at the first uh, at the first trial it's okay for things not to work the way you want them to work but you need to create the system you need to make it unattractive but now using this technique and we're going to dive deep a little more into it uh, next time about how can you create, how can you make your habits, the habits that you're wanting to create, how can you make them so irresistible? The same way you crave, I mean, I, I crave for, for mac and cheese, and not <laughs> mac and cheese, really. I crave for, for French fries and, and, and the other, uh, the, the milkshake. I really yeah. crave those things. <laughs> you know, if, if I can crave for those things like that, how can I crave for my gym? How can I crave for my treadmill? How can I crave for running? How can I crave for studying and reading a book? And this, we, we are all about books here. How can you crave to be like, oh my God, I cannot wait to dive into that book. And that's what we, 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 we want to get to. That's where we want you to get to and all of us want to get to. Yeah. And just kind of wrap this up. Uh, another thing that we mentioned in the previous, in one of the uh, previous episodes when we talked about uh, eat that frog. Uh, Brian Tracy gave a really good idea of how to apply this. Um, I don't know if he read Atomic Habit before, before putting that, but when you talk about bundling temptation, mm. like a bad habit mm-hmm. with a good habit, but to a different pro- pro- a proportion, Brian mm. Tracy say that whenever you get to work, put in 90 minutes of uninterrupted productive time and then give yourself 15 minutes on social media. That works for me. Mm. When I get to work in the morning, actually, it's fairly this past few weeks because I'm really on deadlines again. I'm pushing so hard to uh, be able to meet all my deadlines. Mm. And what I do, I get to work. I spend about 90 minutes getting things done, getting things done, getting things done. Mm. 
And then I open my phone now. Now I start scrolling and, and whatever, checking on the news, or how, how is Congo doing, and, and so on. Mm. But it helped. Same thing when I wake up in the morning. Mm. I've started applying what is in hyper-focus. Mm. Really just let my mind wander. I put my phone away, and as a reward for me spending that one hour in the morning, mm. just in my bed, I'm not asleep, just sitting. Mm. As a reward, I open my phone before I go to work, I check it, I play my music, and so on, mm. and it's been working. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with that that we'll be wrapping up today. We'll leave you four minutes over the top of the hour. Uh, thank you much for thank you so much for having listened to us. We are still talking about atomic habit, and have, we've promised we have a giveaway that's coming out around Christmas. We drag all the way to to the end of the year, and we tell you what you can do uh, in order for you to to receive a giveaway and what are the conditions. And if you're outside the country, we try outside of the United States, uh, mainly we try to figure out something that we can do for you an Amazon gift card or something that can get to you uh, where you are if we are not able to ship uh, the giveaway to you. Uh, it's with that that we will concluding today. If it's your first time here, you like this content, do not forget to hit subscribe and and, 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 and the like button. Uh, if you want to support us financially, uh, do not hesitate to visit www.theunbounded.com and if you want to write to us, we are also available at info at the unbounded theunboundedgrowth.com. We have two special guests that will be coming on our show before the end of the year. We are really excited about that. We'll be telling you more details about that in the near future. And until next time, uh, anything, Adam? That's all I have for today. And really, thank you so much for listening. And from everywhere in the world, it's really been such a blessing for us to uh, hearing all out and even getting your feedback. They've been really great. They've been blessing us. And as I say there, this is also very satisfying to us and all the feedback that you give all the honest feedback that you're getting is really helping us and also helping us even building ourselves more the podcast has been such a blessing to me uh, at the personal level because i believe that this is a double-sided sword we can be telling people that hey this is what works and it doesn't work for people. it doesn't work for us yeah absolutely so until next tuesday god bless you and you have a wonderful week bye-bye